everybody. Welcome to Nine Car Garage. This is the first video of a two-part video. Uh, this part is actually a 10-minute overview. It's going to be like a three or four-part video. 10-minute overview. This is going to be an overview. Of a very long process. Uh, so just showing you a very high-level view about what we built and how much it costs. And we'll put in some uh, timestamps about other important things they might want to know about. Yep. And if you want to know a lot of details, you can go to the second part of the video, which yep. is exhausting. Really long. But That's more it. detailed. Yes, way more detailed. Links will be in the description for those. So yep. if you have more questions about what we did here, you can go to the other video and it has the same order of the slides, Roughly. but there's way more slides. Way more slides. Way more information. We talk a lot more. Okay, we're talking too much. Let's so. go. So this, so we're going to talk about how we, we built this three-car garage. Right, and if you need additional help, more than you know, two people in this case, uh, where you might need that help, or where that help would be most useful to have. Right, right. But other than that, we did this, it ourselves. This is how we do it. We did it. Boom. Okay. Whoops, sorry, I lost my mouse. You're fine. Wasting time. So this is the original design for the garage. Uh, we actually bought a kit from. A lumber yard and modified it slightly. We actually put the garage doors, made it a little wider, and we changed out the trusses. They wanted to give us this truss, and we decided to go with this truss over the, over where the lift was going to be, and then over on the other side of the garage where the green shows, we put in one of these attic trusses to give us extra space on the second level. So this garage is 26, uh, not 26, 24 feet deep and 36 feet wide, and on the second floor there's a 22 by 10 foot floor for a total of. 220 feet on the top and 864 feet on the bottom. Nice. Nice. Oops, sorry. Making noise here. Sorry. Here we are. So, number one, choose your location. Choose your location. So, this is our location. It's up at the corner of our driveway. Right. We didn't know where we were going to put it. We, we said, no let's put it near the driveway. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so it's near the driveway. So, depending on your elevation, you might want to, uh, you might be digging down into to the dirt or you might have to bring in extra dirt in order to... To Build make up. this to make this foundation, mm -hmm. go going. So here's uh, me and one of my kids rolling out some geotech mat. So this ground was kind of loose, and because of our elevation, we had to build up. So we put the the mat down, and we put a whole bunch of gravel up in this area to like raise up the uh, the, the slab for this particular design. <laughs> this is uh, 30 yards of uh, four-inch gravel that we had dumped over here and basically if you have some bigger equipment like this guy here or if you have a tractor you can use a wheelbarrow if you want take all this material from here and put it over there or if you're digging you would dig a trench around the perimeter to make your monolithic slab uh, foundation yep. so jump forward a little bit this is the monolithic slab you can see all the dirt we added is in the middle here these are some found uh, some foundation forms that we made Oops. Mm -hmm. out of uh, some OSB and uh, two some 2x4s and uh, no, yeah, that's it. That's really all this is. Yep. <laughs> that's all I have. Next layer. Right, so we put down some 6 uh, mil poly and you can see Linda's working on putting in some rebar there. We have some uh, number, number 4 rebar around the perimeter for this monolithic slab and the slab is going to be one pour. We pour it in and the concrete's done. That's it. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Going. So on top of the, the you know, so the, this part of the foundation is about two feet deep. In the middle of the foundation is about four inches thick. And this is uh, number, uh, I mean, six inch welded wire. Mm -hmm. And uh, keep going. All we, right. We're, we're going more we're, details in the other videos, okay? That's right. We talk a lot about this. Boom. So we got someone to pour this for us. Uh, it saved a ton of time by yes. having us, someone do this. And uh, it was about 25 yards of, of, of concrete. concrete. And it, yeah, you know, the costs are actually where we'll talk about the cost at the end. Yeah, but this is the one thing that we hired someone to actually do for yep. us. The rest. Well spent. I think it was about eleven hundred dollars from the labor, and it was about three thousand dollars worth of concrete. And I think it was. A, we couldn't have put that. We wouldn't have had enough. <clears throat> no. It's it's way better that we have no. someone do it. No. Having seen the end product, we know now that it was way better that someone else. Yeah, did. have someone else do if it. If you ever think that maybe you might want to do it, maybe not. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do concrete. Let someone other professionals do it. Yeah, that's a that's a that's yeah. another job. So after the pads in, what'd you do? Oh yes. Put in the uh, cinder blocks around the around the base to 
raise it up a little bit off the ground so we have a little more clearance from water splashing back and snow. Mm -hmm. It also raised up the building just enough so we can put in a full eight foot, uh, eight yes, foot garage door. The, door. Uh, the plans actually had a seven foot door originally. So here we're building out some walls. Mm -hmm. Walls framing up the walls. We've got a, um, a look there's two of you, that's crazy. We have a uh, pressure treated um, um, sill plate there. So we hear stuff throwing up the walls. You see we had left the framing for the windows. We just did the framing later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. More walls. So here we go. We're putting up uh, headers and That probably took like a day. Yeah, this is all about a day. It I mean, two day. people can do this in, in about a day's time. Yeah, about a day's time. That's so. So we put in, put in all, all the headers and it looks like it's ready for, for siding. This is typical two by four construction. Yes. <clears throat> um, depending on how, if you want to insulate, you might want to go with two by six. We use two by four, so this is a seven sixteenths inch OSB. We threw it around the outside of the building, and here we wrapped the entire thing. Sorry, I lost track. Where was? Wrapped it in Tyvek. Mm -hmm. No substitutes. Go with Tyvek. Tyvek. Here we're putting up some siding. So we did things a little bit out of order because the trusses were actually delayed. So we started putting up some of the siding before we put up the roof. Do that. More siding, no roof. No roof. No roof. Hey, so here the roof right. shows up. So the trusses showed up. So these are the attic trusses and the scissor trusses are below it. You got to make sure they're in the right order because they have to go up in a specific. They're numbered. They come numbered. Yeah, they so come at least numbered, you yeah. know, you know, so if you really mess up the order. So we got this pretty slick tool. This is for a special tool that's used for uh, putting HVAC equipment in the overhead of like in industrial buildings. It costs us like $40 to rent and What's way up? easier than rolling up trusses. Right. So. We just hung a truss on this thing and you crank, crank this up. thing up and into the sky it goes. Yeah. Roll this guy over. Click. Oh, sorry, click. Roll this guy over to, you know, to where you want to put it. Put some hurricane brackets on there to hold the uh, trusses down. Got some it's boards it's in here that are the right distance, so we put them all two feet on center. And measure them up. Had one guy up on the top of the ladder, uh, stapling these in, and one guy working down on the ground. Yep. Keep going. I'm going. Don't forget your strengtheners. So strengtheners. Your roof doesn't fall over when you're putting it in. Mm -hmm. More detail. So this is just temporary until you get in your uh, get into your, your roof sheathing and then that'll that kind of sucks it all together. There's also a lot of materials to go on the inside to hold your trusses in place so they don't all fall over. So here's we're putting on, you can see we put on the eaves here and we also put, we're putting on the fascias. Mm -hmm. So this is a quick look on the inside. So this is your, your extra 220 square feet of uh, basically little attic space. This is a uh, 20 pounds per square foot that you can put up here. And uh, you can see here you can kind of transition from the attic space up into the, the non-attic space. So you can get stuff up here really easily. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put some stairs up in the back here, but we haven't done that. No, we just live dangerously right now with yeah, the ladder. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you can see we put the back side of the roof? Oh yes, the back side of the roof that's with okay. the sheathing. So you can Keep see going. here. You can see, see, see the sheathing up here, the roof. That looks nice. Look at that. Keep going. So here's us doing the front side of the roof. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Very busy. So gray ice and water shield on the lower three feet and then tar paper up from there. Mm -hmm. And safety line. Safety line. So these safety lines, just put in a safety line. Put in a safety and line. You know what? You can put these things in and the ones that we bought, they go in there and they stay in there forever. So if you ever need to go up on the roof again, there's always a hitch. Yep. So we got this uh, metal Everlast roof mm -hmm. and it was cut to length, came right from, right from the vendor. Uh, like that, and we uh, put holes in on the ground, threw it up on there, and we screwed them all in, did it all the way across. Yeah, very good. So, ah. yeah, so this was we ran conduit for the electricity. Uh, you can do a direct direct lay if you want, but we did we threw in conduit. Mm -hmm. and, so that goes uh, to like the house. Right, this goes from the garage to the house. We ran two inch conduit with uh, two amp, I mean, two uh, two gauge uh, underground uh -huh. wire for our 100 amp service, to 90 amp service. Yeah. That's right. So you can throw in, you throw in a 125 amp panel and we have, uh, I don't know, like three different circuits of, of uh, outlets on the inside and we have special um, outlets here for hooking up to welders and car lifts and stuff like that with a uh, 10 gauge. Big machines. Yep. Nope. Oh. So this is, we put it's in- cold. The, yeah, it was it cold. Yeah, it got cold at this point. So okay. we got this uh, AGP, uh, this all grade pellets, mm -hmm. uh, pellet stove by Lofi. And this, um, this was actually a pretty expensive uh, unit. Obviously, you don't have the uh, insulation in here yet, but we also put in insulation. And the uh, goal here was to keep this place so that we could heat it, but effectively, there's going to be cold storage. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh. That's it. So this is the 
not well, it's not really finished. You no. can see all the insulation over here isn't up yet, and uh, we put in some LED lights. Well, LED lights are actually can be really expensive depending on yeah. what you get. And we went for crazy bright lighting because you know, we're working working out here, and we wanted Do a lot of work. lighting. Yeah. Uh, this shows a kind of a weird origami you did around this corner. So this thing probably like one of the most confusing parts of this build. Seriously? It's like trying to figure out how to like, make this corner and fit it in, uh, and all these like all these uh, special you know metal pieces that you can bend, make on a on a break. We actually just bought right from uh, Lowe's and yeah. we got like these six inch pieces and they wrap the entire building. There's no place on the building that yeah. where you can see any piece of wood. So everything's covered in plastic. Boom. That's it. Ta -da. Ta -da. There it is. There it is. Yep. That's it. That's it. One more slide. One more. I have one more. Why? What are we going to tell them about? The cost. cost. This stuff costs money. Yeah, believe it or not. Believe it or not, it costs money. But I'll tell you something. Building yes. is way more cost effective than having it built for you. No offense to contractors, they have to make a no, living. they're amazing. But if you're willing to work for free. Yeah. It's not not insane. It's not a lot of work because it absolutely is. It's, yeah, uh, and you'll see the insane amount of work in our other videos for sure. Like we really get more detailed. We just kind of wanted to give you an overview of like what a build, yep. what this build looked like. So here are the actual costs. I want you to move your head. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, good, perfect. So sorry. these are the actual costs. Sorry, to, my mouse is going crazy. To build this uh, thing, so it looks like we have about twenty-six thousand dollars into this. If you look over here. You can see the cost summaries. So I've had two different types of cost summaries. One, if you if you're not putting in the loft, if you don't want right. to count that in, so that you'll be your estimate here would be on the 864 square feet. If you count the loft, it's a uh, thousand square feet. So your cost per square foot actually goes down. So basically, you're looking between what you want to include in your building. If you're just mm -hmm. doing a building, you don't need electricity, you don't need heating, you don't need you insulation. Eat. You can do it for sixteen dollars a square foot, which is pretty dang cheap. Yeah. And uh, basically, if you want to say soup to nuts, I want all that Everything. stuff that you did. I want a building that I can live in effectively. And uh, I don't want to count the loft. I don't want to do a loft. It's going to right. cost you about $30 a square foot. So you can add these numbers up if you want. It gives you yeah. an idea about what where the costs are. Some things we went a little overboard on. I think the heat, we went the a little more expensive than we had to. The lights went a little high. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, these are, that's what we have. These that's, are the prices. Yeah. So your cost would vary according to if you had to uh, dig down for a foundation or if you were building up, like we had sure. to build up, so we had to get extra gravel. Yeah, if you didn't need this $700 in gravel, then, then that would then your, be your then cost there. Yep. Um, but yeah, so if you want way more information, like a lot more detail, like actually how we physically did this, just click down below. We'll have um, links in the description section. Right, and yeah. also where we yeah. used help. I was yes. say, I was say needed help because could we have done it by ourselves? Yes. Yeah. Would it have been way harder? Yes. Yes. But there's some things like putting up the roof. Yeah, the trusses. Up the trusses. Way, way better if you can get a, a helping hand. Yeah, or two. another person. But in general, it is totally possible Absolutely. to have two people build a three stall garage. Right. All right. So if you have for questions. For $30 a square foot. For $30 a square foot or less. Yes. So if you have questions, put them in the comment section and we'll do our best to direct you to any other videos where the answer might be or create a video. Right. And we have explains. more garages. We have so many we have so photos. Much more stuff we have to so do. much more stuff and so much more building because we, we have this thing. We like to like build garages. Stop it. I don't know. He has a lot of stuff. Nine and counting. Here we go. Nine and counting. Nine garages. Here we go.